Hey, Miguel. Oh. How are you? I'm fine. Very good. Very good. Very good. You Funny. look good. Came back from the terrace. Uh, I was soaking in some some sun. Very okay. nice. It's been sunny here in Kashkai, so you know it's always good to to venture uh, outdoors a little bit. Yeah. I try to get some um, uh, some immunity. You you need to 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 breathe some air and take some. Yeah. Because it's good for your health, so uh, as soon as you can, or you always have to take advantage of the opportunity to get some 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 fresh air. If you stay confined back home, it's it could be tough when you venture outside. So yeah, uh, that's that's one, one advice I have uh, for for all of you. Yeah, very good advice. Very good advice. Very good advice. So thanks thanks for joining in. Uh, I'm I'm happy to have you here. So we have our a solo session this time so it's yeah. really looking forward to to hearing a little bit about your story behind watches and then i think we're going to talk a little bit about watch traps I'm excited yeah. thanks for for inviting because it's a subject that is fascinating i consider myself a strapaholic <laughs> i don't know if i was the first to use, use that expression but that's but it's the way i feel it's almost pathological because I have, a, I, have a, I have a watch and uh, I, as soon as I have the watch or even before uh, acquiring the watch, I, I can imagine uh, all kinds of steps that uh, would go uh, with that watch to change the yeah. look. So it's, it's, it's all, almost pathological, but it's, it's, uh, it's harmless. So it's, it's, a, it's a harmless uh, pathology. Of course, you get to spend a lot of money and... Uh, uh, I don't know. I could I could be wearing a watch and a different strap for maybe the rest uh, of my days, uh, and I have more than than, than enough straps, as I'm <laughs> going to show you. Because I, yeah, I am prepared really for, the, for this broadcast with my drawers and with a lot of the stuff that we'll be we'll be talking about. <laughs> but um, maybe to start off, you can tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the whole topic around watches and and, and watch straps. Well, uh, 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 I graduated in history of arts, but I was already uh, a lot into uh, into tennis. Uh, I used to be a, a comp uh, competitive player in in my uh, junior days. Uh, and then I went at the university. I was the the, the, the coach of the of the team, the university team. We were national champions in Portugal. And uh, I was also uh, coaching a bit. I was also a professional chair umpire after I graduated. And um, but I, what I wanted to do was to become a tennis journalist and, and commentator. So I knew that the transition would, would come uh, sooner or later. I, I actually um, spent two, three years uh, as a professional chair umpire, traveling uh, uh, on the tour. Uh, empiring tennis matches uh, pro from uh, professional tournaments and then I made the transition uh, of course since when I was a kid I already liked watches I always paid attention to, to watches in my traveling covering the, the tennis tour I was uh, buying magazines and I developed the tastes uh, reading books and then uh, uh, and then I, I started I, I was the editor of a tennis magazine also a golf magazine I I got to know uh, people from, from the watch scene. They started asking me for translations, for catalogs into Portuguese. And I started developing that, that taste, going to Basel World in the mid 90s. I don't think it was even called Basel World uh, back then. It was just uh, the Basel Fair. And, uh, and then I was invited to do a supplement uh, for a newspaper that I wrote. Uh, people really liked what I wrote. And then uh, the, the idea for a new magazine came up and uh, we started the uh, Espiral Tempo in 1999, 2000. And now I'm, uh, I'm a tennis and a, and, a, and a watch journalist. In the tennis scene, I'm the watch guy. In the watch scene, I'm the tennis guy. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. Tennis, I'm a tennis journalist for 30 years and a watch journalist for 25 years. So um, wow. I am. And uh, uh, of course, I've been developing this, this taste for, for, for watch straps, and I like all kinds of straps, all colors. The more, the more variety, the better. And of course, I've been paying attention to, to, to Irsh. So you are the, 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 the most recent generation of, of sure. the, the legendary Irsh uh, strap makers. Actually, sure. I, I've got a Linda Verdlin. Very nice. With, yeah. Uh, with, 
with a very specific strap made by Hirsch. Actually, this one was gifted to me by Robert Jan Brewer. The yeah. Famous yeah, yeah. Guy from Fatu Fratello watches. I, I, I call him Brother Orology. It's the, <laughs> the reverse of Fratello watches. But it's I always find it to be a, a funny name. And um, actually, I've, I have a lot of straps for, for this for this Linda Bevin, as I'll show you Very soon. Nice. But Very this nice. one, the one, this Croco, mm -hmm. was well, was gifted to me by by Robert Chan. And it's a it's a highly sophisticated strap because it has a, a metal insert, and the, the the strap change system is is quick. You just uh, unscrew and change the straps. So uh, so this this is uh, one of the examples of uh, of my watch uh, my strap fascination and i'll show you in my drawers how many how many straps i have for this oops for this wow watch but well, i'll show you the drawers uh, in a while so so yeah of course i've been paying attention to Hirsch, the development uh, of uh, straps and bracelets the new generation the rubber base with with a with a leather insert the integrated designs the yeah. different uh, colors and textures and materials it's, it's fascinating that's true yeah yeah and and yeah. Uh, like you i also enjoy changing um the straps a lot so um i will maybe i can just show you i have a lot here and um, how do i do it i do it like this see oh a lot of, of nice bracelets i have here <laughs> yeah so so uh, I knew that we were we were going to talk. So I thought I will uh, we'll see what I can show you. Oh wow, you have you have more. <laughs> yeah. So, so, we, we, we get, how many do you have? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I just have. Uh... I don't know. Only, only um, NATO straps. I must have. Yeah. Almost 200. 200. Wow. Wow. Uh, of course, I have, I have friends that can help me in, the, in this kind of uh, paranoia or pathology. Uh, and throughout the years, I developed a friendship with, with, uh, with um, someone from Zurich who has a small atelier and, and it's a brand called Maurice de Moriac. And uh, we started talking about the uh, NATO straps, and of course, he has a, a lot of variety, and uh, and it helps to be friends with with someone that can that, that have has so many straps, so it's it, it's easier and not as expensive. And uh, and yeah, I, with him, I, I even developed two two uh, NATO straps with with the colors that uh, are reminiscent of uh, grass court tennis, uh, Wimbledon. Oh, very cool. That the, the look, the, the Wimbledon look, the vintage um, uh, British uh, tennis clubs look, and also a uh, clay court look, the Roland Garros. I'll show you in a while. Uh, they are you know, around here, but I'll, I'll show you in a while when, when we discuss what, what, what I have. But I have all kinds of straps. Of course, when we have the uh, right. Gégel Coutre. Uh, yeah. Master complex or world extreme alarm, and uh, it has a very simple uh, uh, system to change the strap. Yeah. You just have to yeah. push here, and, and it's done. And the only difference you use normal straps. By instance, these were made by Lick in in Belgium. They made this yeah. for me to match to match the, this limited edition. Mm -hmm. Because the regular color is the red, and you only have to to wear. No, not the, what they call these the, um, the pins. Yeah. You only have to to, to put uh, fixed barrette, yeah. not with, with with springs. So it's yeah. easy. You just leave slides, and it's ah, done. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Very fabulous. And these, Very of good. course, are uh, they have round edges. This is a detail yeah. that we discuss because from the moment that you start wearing um straps with rounded edges on on rounded watches you you cannot come back because you start <laughs> looking at the gap between yeah. the strap and the case and uh, i i don't like 
too integrated. The design that is too integrated. You see, it's not yeah. completely integrated. I like I like like this, but I yeah. like a, a slightly rounded edge to to follow the, the curve of the case. So um, so it's easy when 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 you have the system. And I have for, just for this watch, I have uh, I have around 12, 12 watches, twelve, 12 bracelets, including this mm -hmm. one was the, one of the originals. Well, yeah. the wrap and the ladder, and then uh, and then I have these, and I have uh, uh, a lot of those, including these ones. They look great. Yeah. And... They look so, great. Yeah. So it's 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 all a pastime. Uh, a lot of times I I like to you know to to change to change uh, several straps at the same time for uh, for for my watch collection. It's it's not really a collection. I don't I don't view it as a collection because to be a collector, you have to have a theme. So I have random pieces, pieces that I like, mostly chronographs because I'm a chrono guy, and uh, I, I absolutely love chronographs from the '60s and the '70s, especially uh, two counter chronographs with dates. Mm -hmm. So that's my actually I'm I'm wearing one of the, one of those right now. It's oh, yeah, very nice. Uh, and uh, we I think I had this one the, the last time we talked. So it's yeah. the, I really love the. The vintage oil look from the sixties and the seventies. Yeah, it looks great. Should be the 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 coolest uh, uh, oil inspired because the, the, it's a tag oil edition that I have. I don't have them here. It's well, it's too uh, out obvious from two thousand and three. The first project Jack Oyer developed when he came back to tag oil as the honorary president because he sold the company <laughs> in eighty five, mm -hmm. and it was away and he came back under the helm of uh, Jean-Christophe Babin, who is now the, the Bulgari CEO. And the first uh, project they did to develop was to, uh, to bring the Altavia back, the Altavia from 69, the Orange Boy and the, the, the Joe Seifert, because mm -hmm. uh, Tagoy issued uh, the Altavia three years ago, but uh, inspired by a, a 64 case. But I really like, like those, uh, those editions from 2003, that I consider the best dial Tagoy has ever made. But, um, I, I, a friend of mine was taking pictures of, of it when the confinement and the state of emergency uh, was declared. So I don't have those two babies with me. I, I would love to, to show you. Um, I also have the. So I, I have. Uh, I was showing this one because it's the the, the Carrera Jack Hoyer yeah. 80th anniversary, Caliber 11, which is one of the best, if not the best, uh, blog or website related to to Tag Heuer. And, to Tag Heuer. they did a, a top five of the best um, Carrera limited editions ever, and they did this one as, as the best because it commemorates the 80th anniversary of Jack Hoyer. And uh, having interviewed Jack Hoyer so many times throughout the years, I felt that I had to have this one. It has the it has Jack's uh, signature in the back. Cool. It, and it's cool. correct. And I'm, I'm mostly, uh, you know, the, the Hoyer inspired chronographs from the 60s and the 70s. I'm mostly uh, a Monaco guy. I have two, uh, an Altavia that I have two, as I told you, with the C shaped with cushion mm -hmm. case. And also uh, Silverstone. Silverstone being the, the chrono. Oh, very cool. That's very uh, cool. Hoyer um, made in 74 because back then the Monaco was, was not selling. People yeah. were. Monaco was sort of a failure because it was too angular. Of course, the, the 70s were a highly geometric uh, decades. They, they couldn't make round watches in the, the 70s. Uh, they were allergic to, to, to round case. But the Monaco being a square was too angular. So if mm -hmm. you get the watches from the 70s, they are mostly cushion, uh, several curves, and, the, and they, they did the silver stone because the because uh, the clients came to Jack and said, oh, the Monaco is too angular. And then he, he cut the corners of the Monaco and issued the Silverstone. The Silverstone, so the, this is the 2010 uh, edition, limited edition, made to celebrate Tagoyer's 150th anniversary. So Tagoyer 2020 celebrated the 160th uh, anniversary. And uh, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. It looks great. <clears throat> but, uh, special, yeah. but the Silverstone, contrary to the other 
to the to, to most chronographs, uh, oil inspired chronographs from the 60s and 70s, does not have contrasting registers. And I really mm -hmm. like that. I really like contrasting registers on 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 my uh, on my watches, on my chronographs, especially. I really love a panda dial or a, a little bit of color. Also, for instance, this one. Um, you have a three three colorway. You have mm -hmm. you have a, the dial that is silver, the black registers, and the red nuances. And the strap follows the the red nuances on yeah. the, the on the the dial, the logo, and the and also the the chrono hands plus Jack Hoyer's signature yeah. there. Very nice. the, uh, it came with a black strap, but it was too bicolor, bichromatic. So this this way it's three colors and and then yeah, and good choice. <laughs> Three color way, or even a fourth color way. So Good yeah, my, my my favorite kind of uh, of, of uh, watches, Chronos, uh, with the contrasting registers. Of course, I have uh, I have uh, a lot of brands uh, from Rolex to Tudor. I've I've got the, the Explorer to me, the essential Rolex. It's the only Rolex that I have. Uh, the Tudor Black Bay Blue, and um, a lot of stuff. <laughs> but uh, 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 I think my most expensive timepiece would be the Royal Oak Offshore. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a journalist, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not, uh, 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 <laughs> I'm not rich. I, of course, it's easy when when you work in in the in the watch scene when yeah. when you are a professional, and I'm a, I'm a and I'm a watch journalist, professional watch journalist. So it's it's easier. But um, but yeah. Uh, Mostly chronographs and pretentious and sporty because I also have that tennis side. And uh, from early on, I always, um, I always favored this kind of uh, unpretentious and, and cool type pieces. And this, this is, this is a, a cool expression of, uh, of what I like uh, in a timepiece. Of course, uh, uh, I have dream watches. I, I simply adore the tune. It's fabulous to me. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah, millennial brands, uh, even though Richard Mille and BNF. And the Uva also exceptional, um, but the Batoon is has something extra. I absolutely adore Langenzone, brand that really close to into Glassuta so many times, more than twenty times. The the, the falling of, of the the Berlin Wall, and uh, I would love to and Zeitwerk any yeah. Zeit, even though I'm yeah. pro, the Zeitwerk is uh, is a mechanical time piece. But the uh, type work is, is really charismatic. Uh, I'll on a watch. And it, it, it's, uh, it's funny when you talk about charisma on a timepiece, but you can actually use that expression because there are timepieces that, uh, that are different and they are proud to be different. Yeah. One is be uh, controversial, but I think I could point the Monaco as the most charismatic timepiece ever. It's not the best looking. It's not the most sophisticated. It's not the most expensive. It's not, but it has a lot of personality. And yeah, it has. Uh, true. Very true. Personality goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very very cool. Yeah, I can totally agree. I I also really like the Zeitwerk. Um, ever since seeing it on Christian during SIHH, this it's it's a watch that doesn't uh, leave my mind. It's a very very Fantastic piece. I've had it on my wrist several times now. Um, yeah. Going to the Lion Sony boutique, trying it on, and seeing if it's if it's nice. And it, it's it's a truly great watch. You can't say anything about it. And it um, yeah, you, you are absolutely right. I I feel the same. I feel that uh, for watches, it's essential to have a personality, a bit of charisma. It's a cool thing, and you wouldn't expect it. You you wouldn't expect watches to have charisma, but they do have it. Yeah, um, especially shaped watches. I, I, I like all kinds of watches, round watches, square watches, rectangular watches, tonal shaped watches, yeah. name it, you name it. There are, you know, these days, if you do a, an ugly watch at your fault, it's like uh, the, the cars. Even though the Toyota Prius was named the uh, car of the year, it's the ugly <laughs> part. But if, if yeah. these days with, with, uh, with uh, the the amount of information we have, the specialization, the designers. Uh, if you do an ugly watch, it's, it's your fault. And uh, you can do um, good-looking watches that uh, that look different. 
and uh, of course some of them look like uh, small beasts but they're 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 like a beauty and the beast on itself it's it's something that is really out there especially those uh, time pieces from mbnf and the yeah. and, and the the new the new watch making uh, um the scene from uh, from the first uh, decade of, of the 2000 so they, they they came up a lot of brands came up with really different and big time pieces some of them became outdated some of them still still resist uh, still have a lot of appeal but yeah if you don't do a watch that is nice enough that doesn't have a good enough strap or bracelet i think it's your, it's your fault yeah. because level of specialization and it was not uh, always the case because uh, in switzerland the, the 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 industry was highly conservative i mean there were people doing watches in the confinement of the Valley de Joux. Mm. And you could see that you could be, you could do a lot better in terms of strap, strap choice and even dials, too conservative. And now you have designers that come from uh, all around the world to work at the Valley de Joux and work with the most traditional companies. But, but I remember that uh, for uh, Swiss brands, they would, they would have a catalog and they, the, 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 the black dial watches would have a, a brown strap and and the the, the 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 white dial watches would have a, a black strap and it would be really difficult for them to change to change that and the the sporty watches for instance this one this one is is blue because it's a limited edition types of time and uh, but but the regular the regular version is red and they also have a, a yellow one for for the, the the italian motorcycle champion what's his name the I don't. Uh, oh, the the most famous, the not Torres. His name, I man, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll remember. So, so but what, what my point is, the for the Swiss industry in the eighties and nineties, uh, if you did a sports version of a watch, it would have red or uh, yellow accents, whereas. Yeah in the the 70s you had a lot of color an explosion of color and shapes so they they went back and now uh, Ro rossi is his name the, the 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 people watching told us it's valentino rossi exactly valentino yeah. rossi <laughs> well, what have people been saying i haven't been paying attention but uh, uh, i've been looking yeah i think i have a few a few friends watching yeah, yeah. that uh, during confinement started a, a, an interesting project that yeah. they called uh, um, Artesãos de, uh, de Escritório. Uh, a translation would be office uh, office manufacturers or something like that. And they, uh, some of them already had bought, you know, uh, uh, tools to make straps as a pastime because mm -hmm. the, the, they can buy whatever straps that they want. Uh, and the, uh, someone just put the, the 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 website they created during confinement, and they've been doing they've been doing a lot of a lot of straps and posting. We have a dedicated WhatsApp group, and it's fun. And I'm mm -hmm. I'm going to the, the artisans, the office yeah. art. And I told them why office artisans. Some of them, some of you have uh, have have been working on your cave, so it's not quite the office. And yeah, but. Uh, they, I, I, I'm waiting for them to to perfect their technique and then yeah. ask them for a few straps. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Yeah, we have actually we have a uh, a question. Um, I'll put it up. Maybe you can see it. Um, <clears throat> do you always match your watch to your outfit, or yeah. do you sometimes match your outfit to your watch? So, what do you yeah. think? How do you, what do you do? yeah i think i think it's inevitable if you're into straps and you have that much variety you always end up uh, doing that unconsciously or uh, or consciously because if you have a lot of, of watches and uh, you go to a certain occasion you you just adapt the timepiece to, to the occasion and uh, and since uh, i have a lot of straps i also i also tend to to adapt the the, the straps and to match the the belts uh, and the, the shoes and, and the occasion, if if it's if if I go to the beach or if I, for instance, this this is one of the Marine Nationale yeah. from Erica, yeah, originals. 
and yeah, this one with a, with a bronze metalware to 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 match the, the bronze cases typefaces that I have, and I tend to do that. And uh, also, this one is from Tudor. I visited the the yeah, Julia, I know that one. Yeah, the Julian Faux manufacturer. Uh, Miguel probably has more straps than shirts. Bruno is like, <laughs> Bruno, I want my two Otavias back. This is the one taking pictures of my Otavias. So uh, I don't think, no, I don't think I have, I have too many shirts. I have to, I have to confess that. Too many, too many shirts, too many, too many straps. And uh, I was showing you this, this strap. Yeah. Or this one. Also very nice, yeah. Huh? Oh, it looks good with the dial. With a burgundy dial, yeah, very nice. Inspired by the the jersey of the Portuguese national team playing cool. in the 96, 1966 uh, World Championship in in England. They 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 ended uh, third, and I always liked that the the the, the red blood shirts would would do a great a great dial. So this is a um, a nice dial, degrad, nice. fume dial. And uh, he, he surprised me with, with his dial because I, I have been talking to him about about this kind of dial. And uh, one day, uh, three years ago, I, I at Wimbledon, I think, he came to to to, to see uh, the the matches uh, two or three days, and he came up with his watch. He surprised me. It's uh, really cool. But I was mentioning the strap. The strap is also it's it's not a regular not a strap. It is mm -hmm. it's like a, a tissue, but mm -hmm. really a strong cloth. Yeah, and very nice. So this at the beginning was uh, a typical NATO strap. Yeah. But I what I always do because I like a cleaner look. I don't like the extra metal wear and the extra turn and the uh, and the length. I don't have big wrists and I don't like all the all the all that strapping around the wrist. What I do, I put two coins here, one coin, yeah. one coin in the back. I cut it with a with a with scissors. And then with a with a lighter, I cauterize the edge. I also cut here the the, the extra layer, and yeah. the cleaner look, the cleaner look uh, closer to the to the Julien Faure straps from Tudor. Those I have the advantage that you can you can adjust uh, oh, with very clever, yeah, yeah, with 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 the with the buckle you can adjust and it's yeah it's very clever. You adjust you can adjust the strap uh, because you don't have to cut. Yeah, you don't have that extra metal that detracts uh, the the the. Um, you you're looking at the watch, and if you have a normal not a strap, it's there's too much going on around the watch. So, like this way, the watch still is the the main, the the, the main piece in in this in this set, and uh, it doesn't detract your attention from from what is and not uh, necessary. Very good, very good, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, must say, very nice, very um, nice. What else can we do? Well, of course, I'd like. I've been talking a lot. Some yeah. people, my friends, have, have been have been telling me that I'm talking too much. So now, no, 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 no. You are the guest. You you're allowed to talk as much as you want. <laughs> yeah, but I also want to to hear you uh, about uh, Hirsch, yeah. how, uh, how the company is. A uh, little bit of, uh, of course, I know a little bit of, of the of Hirsch history. But uh, where does your company stand right now? What have you been doing? How many manufacturers do you have? You're based in, in Austria, of course. So let, let me know. Yeah, we have been doing a lot in the past few years. So what our main main business is, as you as you know, is wash straps, of course. Um, we've been creating a lot of different kinds of things. So the the last big invention from us is, of course, these. Uh, a caoutchouc and leather straps. Ah, you let, have, let me you let, have, let me confess one thing. I was <laughs> I have one ish strap for this one. Yeah, that I bought. You have the tiger, right? That I bought in uh, in Paris at uh, uh, Mr. Crono. Yeah, near Place Vendôme. Yeah, it had a, no, it, it had a, a red, a perforated red uh, upper with a yeah. with black. Caoutchouc base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the problem was that in that specific uh, bracelet, there were no medium sized uh, bracelets. True, yeah. I actually, True. ended up when I came back to Paris, I ended up exchanging that one for 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 another one. Yeah, and yeah. But I, I was looking at that strap. 
Yeah, kind yeah, of... it's, it's, it's a cool one. Um, we so we we have uh, dealers all over the world. Um, so we've been doing a lot, and now what we're focusing on very highly is creating a better experience for our consumers. So we've what we've done right now is we've created this um, collection. Um, so very similar to what we had in the past, but mm -hmm. um, we, we slim down the collection and to make it deeper. So what we want to offer is we want to, uh, as you said, we want to have these um, specific bracelets all in, in all lengths, in all sizes. So there you like the style and then you can get it. So this, this is what we're trying to figure out right now. And this is a big challenge. Let me just say hello to Eric Giroux, who's, who's watching. Do. Eric Giroux is one of the, the legendary uh, designers in, in watchmaking. So ah, okay. He designs most of the MDNF time pieces, but, but he designs from, from uh, Vachon, Constantin's most classical time pieces to, to the most extravagant MBNF uh, uh, time machines. So hello Giroux. Bonsoir, uh, ça va? <laughs> yeah, happy to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Bruno, Bruno is saying that the world needs more short strap options. I, yeah. I, I totally agree. I have the same, I have the same problem. I, I have a, I have a very small wrist, so I need small straps too. So this is, this is my mission to, to bring smaller straps <laughs> for, for us. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this, this is this is what we're do, we're, we're we're trying to figure out to have a nice collection with with a very cool range from being sporty to elegant, different kinds of materials. So this is this is what we're up to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, and also, it's cool that um, you you could do. But well, these days, I, I usually say that uh, watch communities is right now to watch is what the internet was in the nineties. Yeah. Spreading the culture and. Uh, and uh, knowledge, and uh, it would be interesting to do a specific um, uh, it, uh, limited editions for for certain uh, groups like uh, the Red Bar Group, or yeah. if we have our own group uh, groups in Portugal, it would be really cool. A specific wrap uh, with some writing on it. I don't know, but uh, it yeah, would be that. that kind of limited editions. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. We've, we've, we've done a couple of uh, limited editions like that in the past. So um, we, we've had many different, we had designers creating bracelets for us. We worked with different kinds of um, famous designers to, to create specific models. But um, yeah, we're, we are a bit bigger company. So we have a certain uh, uh, minimum order quantity also. So it's not... Uh, um, is uh, also a lot is still done by hand. So this is a very, very important fact for us. We, we do a lot of the manufacturing steps by hand. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so still we need, we need to um, have this process behind. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think, yeah, totally. I totally agree with you. Of course, these, these, the, the fun part is for me to dive in into these communities. I have the opportunity now and through through cool people like you and Christian and, and Robert from Fratello Watches, I have the opportunity, or I'm very lucky because I was able to to get to know you uh, last year, and and so having these possibilities through these talks now, we yeah. can we can come closer and right. and we can discuss uh, cool projects and 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 also discuss our shared passion for watches. Mm -hmm. So I think. I think this is also something that combines us and, and, and brings us together during this um, situation right now as well. And, and this is my goal actually with these watch talks is to, to bring joy to those passionate, um, to, the, to the watch community rather than um, talking a lot about me. And uh, so, so this is what I, what I try to share. Hey, if, if there are already several uh, limited edition time pieces out there, you know, paying tribute to 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 those communities. Why not? Why not? Uh, why not the? Uh, why not a, a dedicated strap? That's, that's yeah. really yeah. Yeah. So um, I also wanted to to show you the extent of this pathology. Yeah. Like pathology. So see these. So these yeah. are common uh, crayons that uh, 
you know, are used for uh, for autographs, sports mm -hmm. autographs. Tennis players have these in the bag. They when they, when people ask for autographs, they they just they just uh, sign the the shirts or whatever the the fans give them. And uh, but I bought these specifically to you know the the stitching on some straps. I can call <laughs> stitching, huh? <laughs> as good as my friends, the the the, the office artisans. But <laughs> very cool. I can change the the, the, the stitching. On the strap mm -hmm. with that using with using of course you have to be really careful using the using this this uh, because the, the it's really the, the color is really strong it it stays and it's it's a nice uh, way of uh, personalize some straps that that you feel that are, are are similar to others that you have and you can you can you can do an extra an extra um, an extra thing so my friends are, are protesting right now because they think this is this is a uh, this is not cool. It's too <laughs> cool or it's a uh, sacrilege, but hey. Yeah, I mean, you have to be creative. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it's really the, I think it's the, the worst extent of the, of the, the strap pathology. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, it's really, it's really cool. Uh, straps, all, all kinds of straps, perforated the leather, these with, with, with the good homes. Uh, these also Radion in in Belgium, yeah. great straps. I, they're they're friends. I, I also the this is a Radion chronograph with the um, with this kind of um, what do you call this buffalo, buffalo. Uh, yeah, 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 buffalo. Yeah, it, it's really cool. So this is the original strap of my uh, Jack Oyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's black perforated, red and on, red. It's inside, yeah. actually since I have a lot of uh, watches with, with black straps, I wear this one. It's it's a it's a couchu, yeah, type uh, couchu, and uh, it looks cool. It looks racy. Yeah. yeah, I also like a lot this kind of combination, like blue. Yeah, this cool. Yeah. very cool. Yeah, and uh, for instance, this Moïse Moria chronograph also with with a burgundy dial, it has strap of uh, a cashmere strap. Yeah. A single pass not a, not a type strap made by Briston, which is a French a French uh, a company type pieces affordable three hundred mm -hmm. uh, euro, and they and it's based on on the NATO concept. Okay, very nice. And I and I'm wearing it on this one, so it's, yeah, it's a looks good, good. cashmere. Yeah, it looks good. Looks very good. They don't make twenty two millimeters. This is twenty millimeters, and of course, there's always that that the problem when when you have. Uh, Watches that uh, there are 21 millimeters and you don't get to to find a lot of 10, 21 millimeters or 23 millimeters or 19 millimeters uh, irregular sizes. For instance, this NATO, um, this 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 Oris Diver 65, yeah. it's 21 millimeters. This is uh, the original uh, distressed leather strap, but yeah. it's shortened by my friend uh, Alexandre because the strap was too too long so it's shortened and it's it's more wearable now and right now very good i, I already told you about my friend daniel dreyfus from louis moriac is is, yeah. watching, is watching this right now <laughs> we've i've already mentioned the showed uh, a lot of uh, straps that you make including this this nato with the uh, vintage martini racing uh, colors and uh, when we've been talking uh, we've been talking um, about uh, about straps the various kinds of straps with the Nico, who's the, the most, uh, who's the newest uh, generation of the of the Hirsch family. True, very true, yeah. yeah. Miguel, I have a question. Do you, do you have a favorite watch strap? <laughs> yeah, I, I figured that you were going to, you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> I think it's, it's really very difficult as we, we, we we mentioned before it depends on the occasion it depends on the on on when when you leave house to go to a meeting to a yeah. business meeting or uh, more sophisticated events or a, a sporting environments it, it it varies a lot i don't think i think that the, the the favorite strap has to do with your state of mind with your frame of mind in a particular day or moment or occasion so you have to adjust the strap to the occasion and and do you do you change the strap um, 
sometimes more more than once on during during the day or i i could i mean yeah if you have the opportunity to do that sometimes you, you end up doing it even even though it looks crazy even for the the regular watch aficionado i i actually do it and especially if i have this this one i can i can easily uh, change the strap for instance daniel is watching us and mm -hmm. this this see see mm -hmm. the this mm -hmm. is a leather strap, calf strap that has a, a sort of NATO insert. Yeah. And I'm looking for the corresponding NATO. There's an, a NATO insert. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Pull and you just do this, take this out and put it there. And there you yeah. go. Yeah. So, but, and then you can uh, go and use this one. Look at this. Oops. Uh, let me adjust a look at this yeah. really with the blue stitching yeah so very nice i if you if you are able to change of course uh you 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 tend to do it uh, i mean uh, i usually travel with with uh, three time pieces and sometimes you know during winter time i i have to confess that i wear two watches the second one you shouldn't be allowed to see it's just i wear it on the wrist because uh uh, uh because I, I wear the watches so they can run it's good for the watches to you know to, yeah. to flow but you're not supposed to wear to to to, to see the second watch uh but uh during uh, summertime of course i only wear one watch a visible at least and i usually travel with three time pieces and if for instance i go to to wimbledon i i'm wearing uh, I, I, sometimes i take two or three watches because i like to I have also the 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 vice of taking wrist shots and uh, so to take uh, wrist shots on a particular day you take uh, more than one watch and you you start taking wrist shots on 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 center court and uh, you take uh, you take a couple of watches to do so but uh, yeah. but yeah so uh, I usually I, I might change or I might change watch during the day if I have a couple with me but uh, if I go to Wimbledon during the day I, I, I I, I might be, uh, you know, I might pick a sportier look, and then mm, usually I go out with with friends from the media or sometimes a few players, and we have dinner, and then we go to 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 the pub, and I I can ch I could change change the strap for a, for a different look. So yeah, yeah. it's it's cool because uh, Bruno just said all bracelets, all straps should have uh, quick release. So the uh, I, what we what what I use a lot is these push pins. Exactly. Yeah, they are perfect in my opinion because they work very easily and and you can change immediately. So and it works for nearly every watch. So that's the cool thing. That's true. But not not watches that have a specific uh, true specific yeah. strap. Yeah. The, the yeah. yeah. The you, you really need to yeah you, to, you know, to to change the straps and then you have yeah the fabric strap. Look at yeah. this. And also, and then also have the rubber. So for this one, I have what nine different <laughs> looks, and also white. So white is not an easy color. It's not an easy color. People don't know oh, that's too feminine or whatever. No, white is the coolest uh, color in the in the summer. And if you mix it with with a nice style, of course, uh, a white strap on a on a silver dial, it doesn't work. With that white dial, it doesn't work. But with a black dial, with a with a burgundy dial, with a, for instance, even even for this one, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking for a white rubber strap for this one. Yeah, Two yeah. millimeter. I think you might have it because I think I saw a, a Nirsch white rubber strap somewhere in one of the, your retailers in Portugal, but I couldn't. I have I have uh, not a lot of time to, to look into it when I saw it, but I, I think I remember not not that one, not that one. Uh, uh, you mean a pure white pure, one? Pure rubber, pure rubber. Yeah, yeah, we have we have a pure rubber one. Yeah. Yeah, and the people were asking about this new generation of of uh, 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 rubber base with a yeah. leather insert. They yeah. mentioned Hublot, but. I don't know if Hublot was the first brand to, to wear that kind of, of straps. I know that 
there were several brands wearing that strap from an early stage. Uh, for instance, Frank Moore in the Van, on the Vanguard collection. Oh, yeah. So it must be they must have the, the same uh, supplier. So the supplier just uh, just introduced this new generation strap, and uh, several brands uh, started using it. Not just not just um, uh, Hublot or Frank Moore, but uh, many other brands, including Zenit. And actually, Zenit was the brand that he mentioned when he asked that question. Yeah. Um, I just have to answer the question. Yes, Daniel, um, I'm from the Hirsch family. Um, my brother isn't Max, and the bracelets we make are not made in India. They are partly made in China, and most of them are made in Austria because it, we have we have to adjust capacities as we um, as we're not only creating bracelets from our own brand but also very closely working with the watch industry. Well, maybe he's mentioning when when. Uh... One specific uh, type of leather yeah. or a long Maybe. time ago, oh, or a long time ago. Yes. Yeah, it's true. In in the past, we did have a production in India solely for India, but now, at least for for more than more than twenty years now, even even longer, we don't have it anymore. Yeah, our friend Pedro is saying that you need to <laughs> make them in Portugal. Actually, I'm going to to disclose something. So. Uh, there are brands, high-end brands, that are making leather straps in Portugal, and then they say that they are made in Tuscany. Yeah. They say that it's Tuscan leather or whatever, but they're made in Portugal. Also, I have uh, friends that started a company called the Superskin, and they specialize in high-end cork mm -hmm. straps. Of course, mm -hmm. cork uh, is a very typical uh, product of Portugal. I think Portugal is the, is the is the country that exports the most cork items, okay, and uh, the the biggest cork producer, and uh, of course uh, cork straps have been around for after a while, but but they're doing it in a quite uh, uh, better quality. I I was looking if I have a cork strap around here, I don't know. Yeah, but we should. Uh, Cork, cork is, is, is a, an extraordinary type of uh, material because it's sure. resistant, it has that texture, that nuanced look, and it's different and it's highly ecological. And I can't, yeah. uh, being eco is, is, a, is a main asset. What, what, for instance, what is Ish doing regarding the, the, the eco uh, trends? So we, we are right now, we are very heavily um, focused on finding new materials to work with. And uh, we especially do not want to work with uh, with the cork because it would be too easy for us to do that. So we, we try different other materials. We have um, like uh, a wood bracelet. Oh, yeah. That's so, so in combined with our um, culture technology, we have the wood on top. Um, yeah. We have one. We have one with stone that I have somewhere here in my collection. This, this is genuine stone. Incredible. Yeah. So we launched uh, the stone one. We launched, I think, in 2015. And uh, this one was a bit long, long process in, in making. It took us three years to, to get the stone uh, flexible. So it was a right. very, very cool project. Yeah. That's, that's and, a good for the for those Rolling Stones editions. Uh, yeah. By, by Zenith. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Very true. And then, and then what we do is right now we we have a, a pool of different kinds of materials because what we also want to offer is um, uh, ecological friendly or uh, non animal or animal free uh, products that uh, are not made with the caoutchouc core. So there's uh, we have a couple of items that we might release this year, end of this year. So end of this year or beginning of next year some okay. cool things yeah so let me well, let me show you I, I did not have a lot of time to prepare this this broadcast but <laughs> i brought a lot of stuff for instance this corner suisse time master oh, uh, it's a cool one yeah or night and day with yeah with the, with the dial is off luminescence and Very look at nice. it's a uh, it, it it used to be a NATO leather strap, 
that I yeah. cut in the adapted. I cut the, the extra layer here and I shortened it. And yeah. So I also, this is a Marvin timepiece with, with a Perlon. I really like Perlon. And these yeah. days they make uh, better Perlons because it gives a vintage look, a vintage yeah. look to, to, to many timepieces. And also it's easier to adjust the length and uh, it has no holes and it's quite um, quite good to wear it. It, it. it looks cheap, it looks quite good to wear it uh, you know, in, in summertime. It's easily washable. And uh, let me just, oh, let me show you what I have here. So wow. we got here, so this is a gram. Very nice, it's cool watch out. I've I've uh, shown you the these uh, burgundy dials, most uh, react timepieces. So this is the Tudor Black Bay. I'm I have to pick a uh, to pick a <laughs> an auto strap to go with. Yeah. These are from this is nice from um, Tag Heuer. Yeah. So the Erica ones and uh, of course I I've shown you this. Yeah. And the, the Linda Verdelin. So, yeah, so let's, I brought the, my drawers here to show you. So let's go through the drawers. What I have here. Okay. Yesterday I was on a podcast with Seven Friday. I have yeah, I see. Yeah, good, I, I, I watched good, a little bit. Yeah, it was a cool one. The big block. This one yeah. is worth three or four times what it, what it costs. And then I have the the corresponding straps. Cool. Yeah. White cool, rubber. Right. Blah, 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 blah. I also have one imitating wool, but I don't mm -hmm. know it. So these are from Briston. This is yeah. a Briston timepiece. It's a, it's a quad watch, but I, I know that the, the founder, so I have one. Here, you have uh, rubber. Yeah. Wraps. And also Milanese. I like Milanese a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's quite cool. It's been becoming uh, quite popular right now. Yeah. And this, this is the the reedition of the Super Contiki by Eterna with a with a thick Milanese. Mm -hmm. it was launched in two thousand and ten, I think. So here I have um, I have the straps for oops for the, my custos. You have uh, yeah, very cool, yeah. white, blue, croco. Yes, uh, for my uh, old Marpigue Royal oh, Oak. Very nice. Very nice. What else? Let me see if I can close this because I only have, I can only use. So these are the 18 millimeter ones. So these are the 20 millimeter ones, distressed leather, various colors, caoutchouc. So this one is the 22 millimeters, a lot of mm -hmm. straps from Maurice Moyak. This is interesting from. Uh, yeah, that's a cool one. Eh? That's a cool one. It's like. Uh, Denim, but it's from uh, Edwin. It's a uh, fashion brand. So this is this one is cool. Very nice. So these are textile and perforated. This is draw the drawer. Just for this one, but Very I have nice. several, several, several. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. But actually, where where are the the Linda Verdelin? Where's the Linda Verdelin drawer? It's here. We, so, uh, Miguel, I just I just need to say we have maybe two or three minutes left, and then okay. Unfortunately, so we, we need to we need to stop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this are made this one by we, we did. Yeah. This is made by yeah. and the the rubber various colors. And yeah, so I, we actually could be here more half an hour, but I think we, we cover a lot of the ground and talk about, a lot about the culture and history and, and yeah. So it was great to talk yeah. about the passion of mine. Yeah, no, happy to have you here and we can do it again. I think we, we have, we have a lot of uh, material to talk about. So, so Thanks, anytime. Yeah. We can we can especially do it again. I'm, I'd be happy to. And um, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you. And um, thank Thanks. you for for telling me your story and showing us this 
cool collection of yours. And uh, I hope I hope that we can soon see us again. Okay. So we keep it so touch. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we keep it touch. All right. <laughs> And we keep in touch with Roger as well. So very good. So thank you okay. very much, um, Thanks. Miguel, and have a nice have a nice afternoon. Thank you and nice sets. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye.